So good evening, everyone. I'm your, I'm your town manager, Anthony Wilson, and we're really happy to have so much interest in this uh, committee. You know, it's kind of funny. One of the things that I was told we got here, it's really hard to get volunteers. Uh, this committee has filled up uh, amazingly fast. So thank you, thank you for your uh, for your interest and for the time and great power that you're going to invest in helping us uh, revitalize Winthrop's downtown. So I have to tell you, one of the first impressions I had of Winthrop when I visited the first time, I was uh, preparing for my interview as job as town manager, and uh, uh, and one of my very first impressions was this village has great bones. It just needs some TLC, and so that's what we're hoping to do. Is we're hoping to little by little improve the, the village so it's a place where people it becomes a destination people uh, want to come and either have fun or work or live or eat whatever the case might be so uh, so anyway so that's the end goal uh, tonight is really just uh an organizational meeting i don't know that a lot of decisions will be made tonight but we want to brief you on what don and i uh, our town planner don anderson and i have been working on so don what's uh just turn on this camera here. Oh, please, please sorry. So we want to uh, uh, we want to just brief you on what we've been working on. Get your thoughts about how you like to proceed uh, on uh, a few different matters, and then we'll uh, we'll sort of set a course for how we're gonna gonna move forward. <laughs> and so Don is going to be the point of the spear for you, and I will be here uh, as and when I need it. Uh, but uh, I have to tell you. Don's enthusiasm for this, uh, for this effort is really palpable. So with that, I'm going to turn the, uh, it over to her. So we are obviously recording this, and we will post these meetings on the town's YouTube page. So when you have something to say, if you don't mind, uh, please press the button on your microphone and lean in so that uh, folks will be able to hear you on the recording. All right, Don is later. Thank you. So I just briefly introduced myself to you all, but I'm your town planner, started six months ago as a new position. So it's very exciting. And Anthony was correct in that I'm very particularly excited about you know, this committee and uh, working in the downtown. Um, you have some materials that you received tonight and I will provide materials to you in the future in advance of the meeting. And how that'll work is I will send an email when they're available and you'll either pick them up at town hall or if town hall's closed, they'll be at the police station in an envelope with your name in a dispatch. So that's just kind of a logistical measure. Um, do you want to go around and just do a quick interview? I don't know that you all know each other. All right. I'm, uh, I'm Bill Susi, and some of you may know me from the Young and Restless on TV uh, <laughs> or our Facebook group. Uh, Winthrop area residents against the quarry. Uh, after 555 days, we've got a, a wonderful ordinance that everybody has chipped in, and we're, we're gonna they're gonna forward to the town council hopefully for uh, for a vote. But that's what I guess got me interested in, in joining this group. I don't want to be known as Doctor No and, and you know now give back to the community. We you know we worked hard to come up with, with a decent ordinance that's going to help everybody. Now, I guess it's time for me to give back a little bit to the community. In 2001, I was the director of operations of the phone company here downtown when we were redoing the sidewalks and moving all the lines. So my folks were very heavily involved in the day-to-day -day minutia, and I was kind of overseeing the project. So I've got a little bit of background like that in case, uh, you know, that's needed. But at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of like Don you know, and, and, and Anthony. I see an awful lot of potential in this town that just goes unrealized. And it's really not, I don't believe it's going to take an awful lot to really get things going. So thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Penny Jackson Cray. And I have actually lived in Winthrop since 1962. And I've seen a lot happen in the, those years. I went to high school here and graduated in 1967. And it was a very, very vibrant downtown. Five grocery stores, all kinds of other shops. A&P was a big store here too, but so were restaurants. And um, so I have a lot of vested interest because we've lived here ever since. And I am on the uh, I'm vice president of the, with the Historical Society. And I belong to a garden club and many other organizations. And my 
my values and my interest in this town are longevity. And I want to see us get back to much more vibrant see, than we have right now. And I think that that can be done. It will take time and it will take a lot of work. But I think that if we can get a group together that works hard, we can be successful. So. I am Nicole Stanford, but you can call me Nikki, unless you need something I'm going to call Nicole. Um, I own Preble Salvage Company on Main Street and also put on the vault on Free Vintage Market with my husband, Jesse Stanford, who will be available to help with all of this as well. Um, we will be open five years this August and have been doing the monthly market events for three and a half now. So um, I have an extreme vested interest in seeing the downtown continue to grow. Um, and it's, you know, it's bringing more people to live in the community, um, but also businesses and stuff. I believe that we have everything that we need to be competitive with these other towns in our area, Gardner, and Hollowell, you know, that everyone talks about in those two. I don't think that there's any reason why we shouldn't be right up there with them as far as a place to come and shop and eat and work and live and play. Um, I am from Wood. I've lived in Maine for 13 years now, came from Atlanta, you couldn't pay me to go back. I love it here, but with that, I bring 30 plus years retail experience in a major market. Um, and also lived in the Atlanta suburbs, but it was still farmland mm -hmm. and watched some of the first malls go up and some of those things. So to be poised outside of the capital city and see the growth that happens um, and that is happening in Maine, whether we like it or not, there are people moving here. I think we were one of the top states that people moved to um, in the past few years. Um, it's going to happen. So I think we should take advantage of it the best that we can, but also protect everything that makes living in Maine what is so wonderful and I wouldn't leave for anything. So I think there's growth is inevitable, but I think we can also protect what makes me so wonderful. And that is well. My name is Brandon Roberge. Um, I'm a general contractor and developer. Um, I have a company in New England Homes um, based out of Augusta. Um, do a lot of Custom home building, multi family, um, some commercial. Um, we have a subdivision that we recently purchased in Winthrop. Um, planning to build a home there, hoping to break ground into this year, but we'll see. Um, and we also have a property recently purchased uh, in the downtown area um, that has the subway to the in that building and uh, Three floors were vacant virtually, um, and converting that into apartments. Um, and looking to do that is actually another property downtown with it that we're doing something similar with. Um, and yeah, you know, since I came through Winthrop and got a taste of it, it's a really, really nice town, and um, look forward to moving here as well. Um, about me. Just lose my voice. I that's when I read by this I'm Ellen O'Brien. Um, I've been in town since about 88. I've up from Mechanic Ball to come to the house. Um, I've, I've spent 10 years on the school board, so I can handle <laughs> and handle controversy. A few years as chair while we go to new school. Um, I'm also a civil engineer, trained in civil engineering. I did some of the design work on the new dam, the stuff that helped size it, the water, water flow, that's sort of my specialty. Um, but in that process, I also um, was pretty frustrated with the walkability of just our main street in Winthrop and shared some um, shared some drawings and ideas that I hope led to what what happened on 133 and 41 where we have a crosswalk and some of the work that was on the upper end of King Street. I'd love to see the rest of the town be more walkable. I'd love to walk, spend a lot of time up on the school trail. would love to connect that, see how sort of expand our walkability, bikeability. But also, like, like you all, um, I think the town has such potential. We have, what, 12 lakes? All these summer people come up. And then the downtown is nothing going on. Not nothing. 
it has the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> it's a broken thing, but it's you know you, we all know it could use it could use more. Could be a lot like their place and say about work on that. I think we need a brewery right downtown because those drop those drop people in. We had Vander Brew and it was pretty popular. So. Oh, and my husband spent 20 years on planning board, so he would be so excited to know that you're here. <laughs> on this, on Winthrop's planning board? No mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah, I don't know. It was done about a year ago. Some institutional memory right there. Not me. Good evening. My name is Matthew Netto, uh, financial representative with Modern Women of America at Mountain Step. Uh, I'm married to Winthrop. My wife, Paul, is from. Uh, so that's what brought me here to Springfield about seven years ago. Um, and I've been having an office uh, for a little over two years now. Uh, and I also sit on the board with the Chamber of Commerce, which is uh, another reason why I'm here, uh, is to help our downtown businesses specifically um, and you know make our downtown more uh, advertising for other businesses to come. Hi, my name is Joe Shelton. Um, I've been in Maine about 23 years now. Um, lived all around. I've been in Monmouth, Augusta, currently in uh, Win uh, Win Winslow, and we own a building in downtown Winthrop. Um, just like everyone else here, we have a state. My son started a business downtown, and uh, the town has a lot to offer, so it'd be great to start seeing those wheels turn. There's been a lot of energy. Um, so it'd be great if we could just complete that and get more people in because we hear a lot, and I'm sure Nikki hears it as well. People are like, Wow, I didn't realize any of these things were downtown. And I've lived in the area, like we hear from people that live in mind that they take 202 back and forth and never take the swing downtown. So, um, a lot of great things going on downtown. Um, so I think it's great to see all this traction. And, uh, like Nikki said, there's a lot of things we can do to make it great, and there's a lot of things we need to preserve that made it great back in the day. The balance of those two is what draws people in. So um, my current role, I've been in retail, like Nikki, 20, over 26 years. Um, I just retired with Lowe's, um, working in a separate one. But with Lowe's, I was in a lot of communities. So I was in Sanford, Brunswick, um, Augusta. In all of those, we did community service with downtown revitalization. Um, Sanford was a big one because they had their hands full in a couple of different areas. So it was just good to see um, some of this energy, but there's a lot of great things out there that a lot of towns did. Um, my last one was with Michael with the Augusta Downtown Lines. Um, he helped clean up the Capitol Theater. So a lot of great relics that if we just take time and effort, people will come and see and, and then we can get some of these shops going. I mean, it's great little town. So here to do what I can. You want to call it You want to? Uh, I am Shannon McDonald. I am a member of the town council and I am here to be a liaison. I'm not here to direct the conversation or influence it in any way, uh, but I am here as a resource for you. So if you have any questions for the council, I will take it back to the council and then come back to you. Um, if you have anything that you'd like to present to the council, we'll get it on the agenda. So just let me know. Uh, I may be at all of the meetings. I may not. If I am not, I will try to be on Zoom as much as possible. I do have two young boys at home, one and three, um, but it's my endeavor to be here and involved as much as possible. Uh, I do care about Winthrop. I grew up and graduated here, and I went to school with uh, some kids here, um, so I know I get a handful of you already. Um, and I do look forward to uh, hearing and seeing what you're, you will come up with. Okay, if there's anything that you need from me, please just let me know. It seems like the council did a good job in getting a good cross-section, different backgrounds, it's very encouraging. So I know we haven't talked about, did you have anything more that you wanted to go over? Okay, so we need to do a few logistical things this evening and we'll need to um, amongst yourselves decide who would chair the meetings uh, in a vice chair in the absence of the chair. And yes. Let's, uh, but I think that's probably under item four. So oh, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the agenda. I'm going by my agenda. Okay.
So we did the introductions, um, discussion of the committee charge. I actually didn't realize until today that there was potential for that to, to change, but is that, a, do I just open that discussion? I'm not. So, so, um, so what you have in front of you is what the council uh, adopted. And, and one of the things that you'll note there is at the very bottom, it says that the, the council wants you folks to propose a village vision statement for the town. And so in doing that, if, if as you look at this chart, you think, you know, well, this is nice, but we might want to do this differently, or we want to make do something in addition to this or something less than this. I think the council, and I don't want to speak for the council, but I think they'd be open to that. And we want to make sure that uh, uh, that as we move forward, that we're, we're working in a way that realizes the vision that you have, both for downtown and for the work that you want to do. So, so let's just throw it open. If, if, does anyone have any any thoughts about uh, about this charge that is in front of you? And uh, any potential changes? I know, okay, so I'll, I'll throw the ball rolling. I know Nikki uh, told me that she she thinks the the group ought to be the downtown revitalization. I don't think it's perfect. There's people with families, people that are really just new to FESA and for the, the those kind of places. And I think the village has a connotation to it that doesn't apply to that. If I was a young professional looking for a place to move to, I don't think I would start with village. Yeah. So and, and you guys, yeah, you use your microphone. I agree. Um, we've always been just known as the town of Winthrop. And I think if you throw the word village in there, that's going to throw a lot of the older community off off gear a little bit. And I think, um, you know, whether it's a town or a village, we're small. Either one indicates that we're not this huge metropolis. So I, I just think it's probably better if we stick with town. I kind of agree with, you know, town, downtown, because when you say downtown to some degree, that leads people to believe there's more than just residential. What's downtown? There's business, there's shops, there's, um, and every community I've been involved with, that's one of the things they struggle with, but they all agreed on some type of downtown alliance, downtown revitalization, downtown committee. Um, just because that that broad term applies to more than just residential or rental properties. Um, but I think that would be important to work that out. But I agree that village, it doesn't sound like anything that can happen. <laughs> right. Something in the past. All right, so, so maybe that's something we'll consider uh, as part of come back with a, uh, a vision statement and, uh, and any changes to the uh, uh, to the charge that we the recommendation to folks from to the end. About, what about the charge itself? Did anything about these three uh, points here strike you? So, so it's it's on this it's on this page right here. It looks like this, and uh, and you can see there in the middle it says that the that the committee's charge is threefold, and number one is to engage the community to work with town staff in reviewing and updating the downtown revitalization plan. So that is something we'll talk about uh, when, we, when we talk about the update, just to give you an update of things that we've been working on today. So that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a, a fairly significant task. And you know, Penny has been involved in the crafting of the comprehensive plan uh, for the entire town. And so this this is sort of uh, a version of that that focuses specifically on on downtown. Number two is just to advise the council on any initiatives and efforts that will advance. The goal of making the uh, so the downtown an inviting and thriving community gathering place. So 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 do understand your role is advisory. <laughs> so and so your chief uh, work will be coming up with recommendations for the council's consideration, and that may come in the form of ordinances or policies or just uh, recommendations on projects that that uh, that the town should be uh, pursuing. 
And then lastly, is to recruit volunteers to assist in those uh, revitalization initiatives. So, um, you know, the more hands uh, that join in this effort, the more work we'll, we'll get done. So we're open to your thoughts about that, Ellen. Um, I know the part of the uh, vision statement. Um, are they looking for like a twofold? Because I think if we're going to do this, maybe something that's short term, that's quick, low cost, high impact visibility. I think a lot of people um, leading up to this, a lot of people when they come in and we're talking, because this is, we hear everything downtown. They're like, we, we do this in, in Winthrop a lot, we get this traction, we talk about some great changes, and then like it just dies out. Um, so if we do a vision statement, I think it should be a, a short term and a long term um, so that we have some low cost, high impact things, just little quick hit things that people will be like, holy, holy gosh, they, they talked about it, they did it. Um, it doesn't have to be high impact dollars, just things that are visually noticeable to, to people around town. And then people coming in that might be like, wow, that looks unique to win through for yeah. But we do a vision. I think it has to be a short term and a long term. I think that's a great idea. And one of the things uh, we'll talk about a little bit later, but we've had some discussions with the Kennebec Valley Council of Governments with their uh, Community and Economic Development Director. And she recommended the exact same thing that Joe has said. Initially, we need to try to tackle some low hanging fruit and for no other reason than people will see that things are happening downtown. And then that, that develops some momentum of its own. And we'll get to you here in just a second. Um, just to let you know, in the Historical Society today, we actually met, and we've met before a couple of times. We are talking about redoing all the murals, mm -hmm. and we are specifically talking about the one on the building that's right beside the historical building, the old consolidated. Uh, and we want that to be a community project. It will involve the students at the high school and the middle school, most likely, maybe even the grade school, but the owner of the building has given us permission that he wants that mural that's there now gone. And, but we want to come up with something that will still be a mural and in be inclusive of both historical and today. So just, just so you know that there is a plan for the murals about around town, so. And, uh... You know, of course, one of the important things about a vision statement, and this is why we want just to introduce the concept to you, and then you can spend the next month mulling this and come back with some suggestions on. But it's important that a vision statement be aspirational, right? What do we want the downtown to be? And so I think as you think about sort of both short term and long term uh, goals, I think it's important to think about that in terms of what we want downtown, or what you want downtown, or what the community wants downtown. That's for right now. It's uh, shoot for the stars to some extent. I'm a numbers girl, and I would be curious as to how I would go about when I need to attend town council meetings to kind of get an idea. Because if we're talking talking about short and long term goals, and can you even say like lipstick on a pig anymore? Like you know, benches or trash cans things downtown. What kind of funding would be available for those things, short term and long term? Because I don't want to come up with some recommendations that are far outside of any type of <laughs> budget that would be available to do some of these things. Um, so where would that information come from? Would I need to come to town council meetings to get it? Well, so that it's a good question, Nikki. And I think uh, part of Don and mine's challenge is to um, not necessarily <laughs> rely totally on the taxpayers in order to, to fund these initiatives, but to look for, uh, for grant dollars because grant dollars are available for these uh, types of things. And we'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the uptake, but there are a, a multitude of sources that we might be able to approach uh, helping us uh, with the funding as possible. 
would we be able to get some of this information over to like the school boards too, where a lot of the school kids need volunteer hours for certain things? We have kids that are in Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, those are things we can engage community in. Again, like you said, it doesn't have to cost the town any money, but we can get other partners and the more people, the more hands, the more quicker. Just it's not allowed effort then. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. So uh, I think. Uh, one of the successful partnerships that we've had with the schools thus far is on election day, we needed uh, election workers and high school students needed community volunteer hours. And so that made a perfect uh, symbiosis uh, for, for the both of us. And so, so yeah, so I do think that there are, there are opportunities like that that will arise. Well, it's funny because you're talking about the very thing that I was thinking of. I uh, used to work in the Portland, in the Portland School Department, and we created, uh, my school created meals that are hanging in the uh, public library on Congress Street. And uh, like you said, uh, that was one of the things that I was thinking of, is not just the one year old, but both, they could be coordinated into. Uh, something and I agree with you that uh, we need to get our, our students involved. But uh, you know it'd be kind of nice for them to, to see what they might want those murals to represent. And also I think it would be uh, very nice if we, we we probably would need an artist as types to sketch it out, but I don't see why the students themselves couldn't even or their parents help us paint some of it. Uh, it's it's not uh, difficult once it's sketched out and uh, you stay in this, you know, it has to be guided. Uh, that, you know, I'm in full agreement with that. I think it would be really nice. Of course, I'd love to see something that said Winthrop on it. <laughs> but uh, that was just one of the things I was thinking of. Another thing I was thinking of, and I don't know how you people feel about it, is um, there's no greenery down there. There's no uh, sense of uh, grass, trees, a park bench. <laughs> There's no sense of that. And uh, especially with a historical society, you have that beautiful parking lot. That, that of course, is, is a necessity, but it would have been, it would have been nice to have like a little, a little park area that even in, involved in that. Um, and that could be also incorporated into our, our murals too. So if, if that was, was just funny, that I was thinking of the very same thing that you people were thinking. And I do hope that our community does get involved. And I think there's a lot of people that would be willing to, you know, come out and help. We could even have fundraisers while we're doing it. Do you mind if I respond to that? Sure. So first of all, this is this has been such a chance to so actually remember the committee. So I'm not going to be both at the table sitting right next to um, Absolutely. I do apologize for being late. Uh, so we do have an artist who lives right here in town who is very interested. The high school uh, art teacher is a big part of this as well. So uh, and there, those murals were done by many members of the community when they were originally done. I will tell you that they were controversial <laughs> comments for sure. It still are, um, but that's okay. And the other thing I'd like to address is when my children were in high school, which was back in the 90s, uh, I served as um, the head of a group of parents um, under the hospice of the principal at the time was Bill Richardson. And we uh, set up those community hours that we wanted to see the students in the high school use and do work. And it disappoints me today when I find out that they do a lot with sports. Not that that's a bad thing, because I understand that's what they like. But our initial intention was that they would do things for the community at large and not just one specific area like sports. So if we can get, and I know they've increased the hours because we made it 20 per year. Um, my own grandson was pretty upset with me a few years ago when he found out that I was actually the chairperson and set that all in motion because he hadn't done his yet, but he got them done. And uh, I think it's important to include our youth for sure.
Thanks. Hey, so, so I think your your homework assignment is just to think about uh, vision statement and any changes that you might like to see made to the charge, and uh, bring those ideas to us uh, next, at next month's meeting. So, with that, we'll move to as I was have alluded to a couple of times, just an update of things that that have occurred since. Uh, since I arrived in June and, and Don arrived in uh, in September, and, and you have a memo uh, about this, this thick uh, packet that you have here, and so and, and and so what we try to do is just do the legwork and the homework to see what the uh, opportunities and options and possibilities and resources are that we might be able to tap into as, as we seek to revitalize and put it downtown. And one of the first things that we did was we approached the main Department of Transportation because they have a program called a Village uh, Partnership Initiative. And uh, I live in Belgrade, and if you've been through Belgrade's Village, you notice that it's, uh, over, I guess it's about four years ago, was renovated. It looks really nice. And that was largely a project that was done by the DOT, along with some, uh, some private funding in order to ensure that the town, as, as DOT widened the roadway there, uh, sidewalks were added. And so brick sidewalks and then uh, decorative street lighting and benches and bicycle ramps and so forth. And so, so that actually was the, uh, the impetus for DOT starting a village partnership initiative. And they tackle projects, both large and small. So, so they might do some gateway treatments as a sort of smaller uh, project. And then larger projects, they would actually either design and do the construction themselves or contract out to do the construction. So, so that is a, a resource that might be available to you. And the, the packet that was emailed to you or the agenda that was emailed to you uh, earlier this week has links to the Village Partnership Initiative to their website if you want to know uh, more about that. But that conversation actually led to another conversation with another DOT program, and that is the Bicycle and Pedestrian Program. So. Some of you have mentioned about the walkability of our downtown. And um, as I said, when I first visited Winthrop, I was um, impressed, first of all, that there were so many sidewalks and, um, and realized, though, that they're in pretty poor condition. So we've got to do something about that. And so Don and I met with uh, the person who heads up the bicycle and pedestrian program uh, for DOT. And what they do is they do put fun uh, sidewalk improvements. And so we are planning on submitting an application in July uh, to get some funding from DOT. Now that is a long process. It can be like a three-year process before the construction actually begins. But the first step is to get a come, come on back up to the table. So the first step is to um, uh, for them to do the design and also there's some easement acquisition because uh, this fellow walked the, uh, the sidewalk tree on and I and uh, quickly noticed that our sidewalks are not um, ADA compatible, and so they're too narrow, and so and so they're going to have to be widened, and that is going to require some easement access or, or acquisition by DOT. But they work on that specifically, realizing that can be a very long process of working with property owners uh, uh, to get that. And we've got a you know a pretty good network of, of sidewalks downtown, but. Uh, he seemed to think our best bet would just be to first and foremost address those asphalt sidewalks that we have all down Main Street from up there at the Walgreens all the way down to uh, uh, to Winter Fuel. So uh, so that's something that, that we're going to be pursuing as well. Um, it was probably the, the very first week that Don was on staff. She and I went to a training seminar in Gardner hosted by the main downtown center. And so that launched a series of discussions with them, and we've engaged in some of their training uh, since then. That led us to become a municipal member of, uh, of the main downtown center. So what that will allow us to do is, again, just to tap into their expertise, their resources. They know of funding sources that we might be able to tap into. They offer uh, training, and it's a networking opportunity to talk with other communities about what has happened in their downtown and how they managed to, to make that happen. So that, and, and in fact, that relationship has already yielded some fruit because at the back end of this packet is a revitalization roadmap for the community of Old Town. And that, uh, that project was funded 
through a USDA grant um, that the main downtown center applied for on Old Town's behalf. And so they're applying for that, uh, that grant again. And, uh, and we are one of the four communities that they've chosen in order to try to, to make that happen. So this would not replace our downtown revitalization plan, but as you work to update that, it's going to help inform that to some extent. And, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully pick out, like you said, Joe, some of that low hanging fruit projects and then, and then some, some bigger loftier projects that, that we might be able to pursue. Um, two of our committee members, Penny and Nikki, wrote letters of support uh, for that, uh, that grant application. Uh, Penny representing the Historical Society and, and Nikki as a uh, downtown business owner. And so they feel very confident that they will end up getting that, uh, that grant and that you know, we'll be able to work with a consultant on that uh, uh, revitalization roadmap. So that's exciting news. During that initial uh, main downtown center training session, we were introduced to an official within the main Department of Economic and Community Development who oversees and administers the Community Development Block Grant. So you folks have probably heard about that. It's a federal program <clears throat> often referred to as CDBG. And they provide uh, all sorts of grant opportunities for downtowns. Now, the catch is that you have to uh, have an updated downtown revitalization plan. So that's why it's important. That's one of the reasons why it's important for us to do that. And um, in a second, I'm going to let Dawn talk about that because she's found some interesting things about uh, about our plan over the years. But um, uh, but anyway, so we have some again getting back to your question earlier, Nikki, about funding sources. Community development block grants would be something that would help us uh, in our downtown revitalization efforts. But first, we've got to make sure that we have an updated plan. There is one program uh, that CBG has where we don't have to have an updated plan, and that's uh, facade grants. And that's uh, who used the term putting lipstick on a pig. That's that, and they and they readily admit that's sort of what it is. But it starts to help to develop that momentum for other things happening downtown. And and my initial thought was uh, a perfect uh, candidate for that would be the office building that is associated there on the at the Carlton Mill campus. Uh, right next to where the vault uh, occurs. Um, it looks like a pretty impressive building from, from the outside. And on the inside, it is a total wreck. <laughs> it is a wreck. But again, I think, you know, improving the facade of that building alone would help. Um, but there's a reason that we haven't yet uh, pursued that. And that is because, because uh, oh, and by the way, with the downtown plan, like I mentioned, we got to get the uh, comprehensive plan approved first, and that's going to be on the council's uh, April twenty second agenda. So, so we're making progress on that. I think I think we're close. So, the reason we haven't pursued that uh, facade grant is because we are also working with the main uh, Department of Environmental Protection and the uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Kentucky Valley Council of Governments on doing an environmental assessment of the Carlton Mill. And uh, this is something that Katie Cog had initially suggested to us and they managed to uh, uh, rope in DEP and, and EPA. And both, from both of those agencies came a few months ago and toured the, uh, the mill. And I was, you know, I was super encouraged by that visit because they were, the, the, folks, the folks from the EPA were from Boston, and of course, you had the, the main DEP folks, and they were like, this place is incredible. The great things can happen at this place. We're going to help you re revitalize this place. But the first thing that we have to do is do an environmental assessment to see if there are any environmental issues there that need to be addressed. And if there are, they've also uh, promised that they're going to help us address those environmental issues. And that's crucial because no developer is going to want to take on that project without knowing exactly what they're going to be dealing with from an environmental uh, standpoint. Uh, we have also recently applied for a grant uh, through the state, a housing opportunity grant. And one of the facet, uh, facets of that is that we have said we would like to take $25,000 from that grant, work with a consultant to develop a mixed use plan specifically for the mill. The mixed use being a combination of residential uses 
and uh, and also uh, commercial uses. So our vision at this point, and you will help us shape this, is that the mill would be a great place to develop some affordable workforce and senior housing. And, and especially like senior housing, think of the synergy there because you have medical facilities right there in that same building. So uh, so anyway, so those are the things that we have um, worked on today. Oh, one last thing. So are you folks familiar with uh, tax increment financing districts, often called TIF districts? So it's a tool that municipalities use to reinvest tax dollars back within the designated district, tax dollars that have been raised as a result of improvements within that district. And so we have a, we have a TIF district. It is the, the it's, I think it's 2.6 acres that are the, the Mills campus. And so any improvements uh, within that then go back into uh, reinvestment. Well, yes, ma'am. Is the uh, bridge that is across the street from that mill, is, is that going to be included in the revitalization of the mill? Because it's falling apart, you know, the, the whole area in there. Yeah, it's not, it's not it's not anything that we thought about. That's a that's something definitely worth considering, especially with the amount of water that's flowing through there these days. Yeah. So so anyway, so um, the tenth district is set to expire in twenty twenty six, and so I have talked with the town's attorney, and we have included uh, funds in the proposed uh, fiscal year twenty five budget in order to extend that uh, tenth district beyond twenty twenty six. And um, and we can extend that, I think, this by up to 10 years. So the reason that's important is because now there are lots of new programs that TIF districts can tap into, and one of which is providing for affordable housing. And so I think that's something that, as we work with the town attorney, we'll probably be proposing, and maybe with your endorsement, your recommendation to the town council about how we use those tip dollars in order to ensure that it's just not enriching the property owner, but that is going towards specific redevelopment within that industry. So, so, anyway, so those are the things that we've been uh, that we've been working on. Before I turn it over to Don and talk about the, the downtown plan, do you, do you folks have any questions about any of that? So people ask, well, you know, where's the grant money? And, and we said, listen, these things take time, right? And, we're, and so Don and I have been trying to do our homework to ensure that we're not spinning our wheels and when we actually submit an application that is something that uh, has some merit uh, that might warrant some, some funds. But I think uh, I think we're laying the groundwork for, uh, for making some progress. Yes, ma'am. I might have missed it, but uh, did you include Ann Ball? In, uh, in that because she's the director? And yes. She, she did mention... Uh, the, the access to people that could draw, draw the uh, murals. To oh, okay. So you mentioned Ann Ball. There's actually an official with the main downtown center named okay. Ann Ball. That's her. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. So we have we have worked with Ann Ball uh, uh, in joining their uh, municipal membership program. So Don, why don't, why don't you talk about our our downtown revitalization plan and, and what you found about its, uh, its different iterations? Sure. So it's very exciting to be here as a new planner, but the town isn't new to planning. There's been a lot of planning with volunteers and with KB Cog, like astonishing amount of plans and updates uh, that have occurred. So the downtown district, the revitalization is one case in point. Um, this is a small stack of all the documents that I have been going through. These are, this is from 1986, um, downtown development project, uh, this is the 1987 downtown revitalization plan that was updated uh, in 2000. And we're gonna be looking at the 2000 plan to update that. And I'm gonna send around a sheet and I don't wanna get people distracted while we're talking, but just to check off if you'd like hard copies of these plans, I can send you a digital link, they're scanned. I personally like hard copies to mark up, but I don't wanna make them if people aren't gonna use them and waste the resources. So I'm happy to make them for you, but if you could just check off what your preference is and I'll make sure you get those for the next meeting. So what's, it's it's interesting, but it's not really surprising is that 
there's so much history in these plans that carry forward. So the goals and objectives, there's a lot of them that are very similar um, or ones that haven't been completed yet that you know carry forward and, and will likely carry forward to this plan. Um, I was saying to Anthony earlier, everything old is new again, right? So I think that once we update the logistical part of it, the, in, the inventory um, and looking at the, the, the table of the different ways to implement the uh, goals, that we're gonna carry a lot of that forward into this update as well. So we're not reinventing the wheel. I think you're gonna find when you look at it that a lot of the plans are still relevant. And um, I will get you those hard copies. You can go through them. And I think that's what you're gonna find. It's very interesting in, in looking back through this in history. Uh, so what one of the things that we're gonna to wanna to do, and I know Anthony identified couple of things for the next meeting. We'll look at the charge. You'll have time to look at that before the next meeting. Um, it sounds like we're gonna update references to the downtown. Was that decided? Does that need to go to the council? We'll, we'll decide Continue that. discussion, okay. Uh, Short-term vision was, was pointed out. That might be something uh, worth looking at at the next meeting, um, the vision creation in general, but lower hanging fruit would be that short-term vision. And we're gonna to need to start reviewing the 2000 plan. Um, we may, you may wanna look at subcommittees for this, but we're gonna review the status of the goals and the revitalization strategies in that 2000 plan um, to determine what's been complete, what are the successes, what's been complete, and then what's outstanding and what's relevant to carry forward. And as part of that, we need to update the inventory section. So when you look at the plan, there's reference to all of the existing infrastructure, the existing um, actual structures, uh, whether residential or commercial. And we need to look at that and see what is what is this, is this still in effect or do we need to make some modifications to that? And I know there have definitely been some improvements to sewer and water. Um, there's been some major projects that have, have been completed that will need to be updated. I actually met with um, Dan Wells today, who's the over at the water district. And he was mentioning some of the work that had been done and it was significant. Um, so we need to update those inventory sec sections. So there's a little bit of um, dry work, I think, in the beginning, right? Just because we got to see where we're at, um, you know, carry some of that forward and then look at the vision, update the vision and how to achieve it with what we have and what, what else do we need to do to get there? So give me just one second, I apologize. One thing that I wanted to recommend, and my role is advisory always. So I will give you information for meetings, whoever is the chair, um, set the agenda, provide materials for you. So anything that I tell you or provide for you is advisory only, and I, I think you're already aware of that. But my recommendation to start, we're gonna have public processes for, you know, for visioning and get the community's input. And it's a challenge to get people to participate, but one of these studies in here, they had 60 people come. I'm not sure which year it was. And to me, that was very impressive. So my thought is that there are a lot of folks who have been involved in these plans over the years. So I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plans right here. And there were committees that, that worked on all of these. So my thought would be people aren't gonna all be around. Um, they may not all be interested or available, but if we called, out to these people and see who might come and have a discussion with you all and have like a, a lessons learned, but not focus on the negative parts like, well, this didn't work and this didn't work, but the successes as well, mm -hmm. um, learn from those. And I've not done that before in any with any committee that I've worked with, but I do think that there could be a lot of benefit to it. Mm -hmm. So that would be prior to really digging in and prior to public any other public input. So I'm just gonna float that out there. That would be a suggestion. My, my curiosity is to also know, like, not to focus on the negative, but where does the breakdown happen? You know, Joe mentioned it earlier, because I, when I came to be a business owner, this time, I was in a lot of business owners and stuff. It's like, well, everybody, you know, there's committees and there's discussions and there's whatever, and then nothing. And it's like to, to ask those people, like, where did the breakdown happen so that we can avoid that happening again? Like, yes. Where is it starting to fall apart? Is it the funding? Is it the follow through? You know, and just kind of. And make plans for that ahead of time, so that it doesn't, so that we're not another binder on your stack. And mm -hmm. So, and I totally agree with that. I think 
one of the things of the last plan is it just sort of sat on a shelf. But I think that's where this group in particular is really going to come in handy because you're going to give accountability to the staff and to the council to say, okay, you know, we're, you know, we got to get these things done. How are we going to get these things done? It's sort of like uh, what we talked about with the conference of plan is we need an implementation committee to ensure that the, the recommendations within the conference of plan are I think that's a role that, that you folks will be playing uh, as well, just to ensure that, that we're moving forward. Because I do think I agree with the challenge is to make sure that there's something actually comes from the plan. We're not just creating plans for the sake of doing it. Um, if I could ask the manager, so my understanding of this committee is that the, the, the charge is to update the plan, but the committee will still stay in place to move forward with like you're saying, create accountability. Is that correct? Yeah, you guys are a standing committee. So uh, think of it as a forever committee. You're, you're, <laughs> not, an ad, you're not an ad hoc. You're not a, that doesn't mean you have to serve forever. But this, this, this body this body is going to live on because I, I think this initiative is so important that we need a standing committee to make sure that, you know, again, staff and council are held accountable to, to, to pursuing recommendations that Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just going to take a minute to pass around, and like I said, I don't want them to get distracted from the discussion, but I want to, I do want to make sure that I get um, this feedback so I can make sure you are supplied with the right materials. But these are some of the plans. Um, you just want to, you know, flip through it and see if it's something you like in hard copy, and just go ahead and check it off on there. There, all of the plans aren't there. The bike and ped plan I've got over here, but it's not. I don't have a hard copy of it here for you to look at, but. Um, I'm, you know, I'm happy to provide you anything that I find. So if you just want to check off what you would like and pass it around, thank you. We'll talk quickly just about the temperatures. <laughs> so, uh, so this is the second, third day of the five thirty. Did that? Do you, feel, do you folks feel like that is will generally be a good meeting? <laughs> no, it's not because it's actually speaker night at the Historical Society. I'd like to see you all at the Historical Society on the second <laughs> Thursday of every month. So if we could alter it to the third or fourth, I'm good with Thursdays if that's. Uh, uh, other thoughts with the third and fourth Thursday of the month? I could do like third Thursdays, second Thursdays, first Thursdays. I just can't do fourth. Okay. I do classes that night. All right. So now we're down to, to the uh, <laughs> to the third Thursday of the month. That's where I can do so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with all of our chamber activities to the third Thursday of the month. And maybe, which I, I mean, you can always kind of go over them again. Back to the survey. But, <laughs> yeah, we may need to send a, a do a poll. Uh, okay. What about, uh, okay, so what about the first Thursday? And Tuesday is already knocked out. Um, not, well, I, I think everything's on the table right now. Actually, board meeting for the Historical Society is the first, so. Oh, the and I'm the vice the president, so I kind of need to be there too for that. Okay, so third days are out. <laughs> so I'll, I'll set up another Google poll and uh, email it to everyone, and uh, and we'll we'll see if we can find a. This this is always the challenge with the group, right? Is uh, you're, you're trying to corral seven like eight different schedules. Um, last Wednesday of every month is I'm. The president of the credit union board, so that one's out too for me okay. ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I belong to a lot. <laughs> if you want to get something done, you ask the busiest person. Oh boy, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, I do well. appreciate the five thirty start time. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm, so I'm glad that I'm glad to hear you say that. Alex. I'm a firm believer in you know once people get home. Yeah, dinner and kick off issues, whatever, it, it's hard to get back out again, especially in January and February, right? And so, summer. Yeah, and yeah, summer yeah. So, so anyway, so, so we'll try to keep the bike free. So, so look, we can, if we can all agree 5.30, it works for everyone, it gets good. I guess the last thing that I would encourage you to do is uh, think about, uh, uh, we will need to elect a, a chair and a vice chair at the next meeting, so anyone might be interested in that. 
you know, one of the things that, that Don mentioned is about uh, engaging the public and gathering public input and so forth. And so I think we've got a real resource with us right here because, I mean, Gil has been super successful with his, uh, with his Facebook group about getting people engaged. <laughs> Uh, and that and shouldn't make eye contact. And, right. <laughs> well, and you know that it's one of the um, when you have issues like the mining ordinance or the mooring ordinance, it is it is one of the silver linings that is people get interested, and then it's a matter of trying to capitalize on that so that they that they you know get engaged in 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 the case of the mining ordinance in really productive ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've really helped to shape the, the ordinance that's been like thousands. So, so I have no doubt that we'll, we'll be able to get the word out between um, Gill and the, and the town's Facebook page and, and our website and uh, and the community advertiser. We'll let folks know what's going on. We have we have over six hundred uh, folks on our Facebook page, and again, some of the, some of the comments I get is, "What can we do? What can we do to help? What can we do?" And sorry, I apologize, folks. I got a sick relative in Canada here, so we're going back and forth. But anyways, the, the engagement process, you know, once we get it rolling, we had it going pretty good, but now it's kind of like the wheels are, are stopping. So it's just a matter of getting it going again. And again, out of, out of this, you know, those 600 folks, hopefully we can get some, some a good representation of what, what's needed in here. So thank you. Um, did you have anything else? Yes. <laughs> I hadn't started yet, actually. Yeah, so I don't know, time-wise, what is your expectation of a meeting? So it's been an hour. Were you expecting an hour and a half, two hours? What's reasonable for you all? Loaded question, really. <laughs> There's a lot of work we could do. We could go all night, so you're going to need to put a cap on it. I'd like to keep it to an hour. It's all sort of free and not lining up as well. So okay. It's <laughs> and um, monthly, we you thinking monthly, bi-monthly, do you want to start with monthly and see how things go? There may be subcommittees, which then would be an additional meeting. My thought would be monthly and then, you know, as the subcommittee work starts, you know, see, see how that is. Okay, so monthly meetings for an hour to start. And then we're going to do the doodle poll and determine what, when that day and time is going to be, or we know the time of the day. Okay. So I'm just going to I'm just going to put out some things you're not going to take any action tonight and understanding you you know you want to limit this to an hour just some things to chew on. So the documents in front of you we didn't expect that you were going to be able to review those tonight. But what you have besides the agenda is the uh, Anthony went over this the um, membership in charge from the council so that's something we're going to talk about at the next meeting. Um, you know, looking at the charge and thinking about the vision statement. And then the town council created the committee's roles, responsibilities, and process. So if you could take a look at that. Anthony had uh, the memo put together, and those are hyperlinks that are in that um, memo. So you received it by email. So if you go to that and click on it, it'll take you to the resources. And we'll we'll use that quite a bit, hyperlinks, so that you could just, it's easy. Um, and then there was that example from Orono. Was Old Town or Orono? Yeah. And then also there was um, there's a couple of sheets downtown plan components and we met with KD Cog and they when we first started talking about this they gave some basic information and I felt this this would be good some basic information to start so it's downtown plan components and then principles of downtown revitalization and it's it's across the board it's general information for all communities and I I found it to be very helpful and it is in keeping with with the plans that you see that we have done. So I think that would be a good place to start and then be looking at the plans. So there's gonna be a lot of things going on concurrently. Um, one of the roles that I play is I staff the planning board and there's a lot of low hanging fruit. We wanna look at the vision, we wanna talk about you know plan, but if we don't wanna plan for a plan, there's so many things that we can do now. So concurrently with the planning board, there's a lot of things that we can look at that then I can work with them to amend regulations that are gonna take down barriers, um, they're gonna create more protections. There's a lot of things that we can do with that. So that, just so you know, is one of the things I'd like to achieve. The board um, is having workshops in addition to uh, development review meetings. So they're they're rolling up their sleeves too. And I'm, I'm gonna give you a case in point. 
Um, <clears throat> so you talked about the communications building earlier. Um, I was contacted by the old owner, Jared Mayhot, and it sounds like you were working him, with him regarding the mural. He wanted to put apartments on the second floor, and he's got a 5,000 square foot second floor. And I know that Brandon ran into this too, the numbers of, you know, we've got this building, all the square footage, but the density allowance says you need so much land area per dwelling unit. And as it is right now, it's the highest density in town, but it's actually not that high. So that 5,000 square feet on the second floor could accommodate two units. So, yeah, <laughs> so we've been in touch. He's waiting to see how these conversations go, you know, it's a process. He knows that amendments don't get made overnight, but he's very interested and he may attend some of these meetings in the future. He's not here on Zoom now. Um, so this is something that is, it needs to rise to the top of the um, priority list. And it's not this committee would necessarily make the changes, but in terms of recommendations to the planning board, what is the right number for density? What does that look like? Um, and people are very wary of this. Mm -hmm. So that's that is one of the kinds of things that everything will be going along at the same time that I'll be working with the planning board based on some of the discussions and recommendations you have here. Um, so that was just an example I wanted to give you. Um, let's see one moment here. So here's another thing that we'll need input from you all on the state law. So the state's trying to take barriers out of the way to create housing. There's a housing demand, housing shortage. So there are two new laws right now. One of them is pertinent to mobile homes, manufactured homes and mobile homes in the, in the state saying, wherever you allow a single family home, if you have a single family lot, you can't differentiate between a mobile home, a manufactured home, a stick built home, they're all residences and you can't preclude any of those uses. So that's A. And, um, and then it goes on to, to say, mobile home parks will still fall under subdivision regulations. And site plan regulations would be actually much more useful in that circumstance, but we don't have site plan regulations yet. So we'll be working on that. Um, and there are some inconsistencies, not a lot. The ordinance is pretty clean, but the village district in the table of uses allows for mobile home parks, but it doesn't allow for mobile homes. <laughs> so um, that needs to be reconciled. But what's the answer? What does that look like? And that's where this committee you know, can do the work and make the recommendations to the planning board and then they can work on the language. So I anticipate that you're gonna be looking forward, but also we're gonna be taking actions, especially a lot of things that are outlined in the previous plans and that were consistent moving forward. I don't think it's gonna be surprising that they're going to, some of them are gonna stay on that list. And I don't, I don't see a reason to wait on many of them because when development comes, you want these things in place. And I just came up from working down in Falmouth and it's that part of the state is just crazy. So before the wave hits, we wanna get some protections in place. So I don't know, those were just a couple of examples of things that I, um, with my other hat, my planning board hat have been coming up and how that will tie into this committee. So there'll be the plan, but they'll also be asking you to help the planning board with some of the logistical pieces of the regulatory land use ordinances. So just add that to the list. <laughs> um, do we want to do a chair this evening? Are you comfortable to pick or do you want to chew on that for the next meeting? I think maybe the next meeting with the time. Something to think about while we're... Okay. Okay. Then what I'll do is put together an agenda and I'll email that out to the group and let you know when the materials will be available that go to that. And you can either pick them up here or at the police department I'll let you know you know, when they get moved over there. Um, and in the meantime, we don't have a next meeting scheduled because we're gonna do this survey. Uh, does anyone have any questions for me or concerns or? I was just thinking that when the chair was, if people could at least give you their name if they're interested, hmm. then we all have an idea of who's, who's interested in this. Just email that to Don. You don't have to say it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Do we have Dawn's email anywhere? Or she email us the. Yes. Uh, You've got the yeah. card, so, so, yeah. so uh, we'll get her card and a few folks. So I will do chair and vice chair in case the chair is not present. And I will do um, take notes at the meetings, and you'll need to approve those 
um, at the next meeting, they're just going to be very basic, not detailed discussion, you know, who was here um, in the topics mostly. And, um, and then if you do take action, that will be in there. So the minutes will not be difficult to review and we'll just try to keep right up on them so they get approved and posted online as we go. Will we have like a minimum amount of people required to have a meeting for the Oh yes, we'll need forward. more than more than fifty percent. So right now we have eight members, uh, although there's another uh, potential member on the April twenty second okay. council agenda, and so at that point we would need five of the nine. Okay, and any kind of stipulations on like if you miss so many meetings, like things like that. Would be uh, important it's, to it's me just, because like the, somebody's going to miss a bunch of meetings. Yeah, it's in the roles and responsibilities. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this document here. Okay. I'm excited. I am. Thank you all for coming. This is going to be great. Thank you for working. Yes. It's been started. planning. <laughs> so, so, so any any parting questions? And if you have any, I was just going to say if there's any um, questions regarding the roles or responsibilities or processes in there, please let me know. Um, I'm planning to meet with either uh, Anthony or Deb as well as um, chairs of the different committees that we have. Uh, to kind of bring that back in and just review it uh, to make sure that we have a buy-in from all of the committees and making sure that we are uh, putting out the right um, information to everybody. Mm -hmm. So if there's any questions or comments about it, please just, you know. I was thinking too, if you know, if I was thinking that we're going to be sharing because we have a Google Drive that we share from or just tell or something that Mm -hmm. the space, yeah, we could create that. Yeah. Just start keeping yep. Yep. <laughs> Some things will get posted online, but yeah, not all of it will need to be. So I have not done that before, but I'll find out how to do it yeah. and we'll create it. I'm really excited about that. Just so you know. <laughs> when I came back to Wither, I was really excited about the comprehensive planning committee. Uh, we were kind of looking at things uh, in our downtown, how it's changed so much, and then the infrastructure. And so on a whim, just decided to run for town council. So now serving on the town council, uh, it's been uh, fun. It's been challenging uh, trying to work through the budget, but I've been really thankful. We have incredible staff uh, with Anthony, with Don, with Deb Nichols, our executive assistant as well. Uh, they are workforces and getting through a lot of uh, tasks. So big uh, shout out to all of our municipal staff for the hard work that they do. They are rocking it. So I have a an idea for first fundraiser or a fundraiser, a rubber duck race. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they do that. that. They yeah. do that. Yeah. They did that in uh, Gosstown. When I lived yes. in New Hampshire, they had the duck. Yeah, very, very popular. Yeah. Yes, yes. Kids Mill Stream. Mill Stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. People come downtown. Right the dam. <laughs> like now they slow <laughs> not easy. A lot of fun things to think about. Yeah. That was, that was How about the motion to adjourn from Mac and get home for bed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so seconds. All in favor? Thank you all so much. Thanks. So you. impressive. Thank you. 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 Thank you.